God's love. Elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. Well, welcome to our telecast today. What a joy to share with you. Have you ever had a dream in your heart, an expectancy, and then that dream was shattered? It didn't work out. It could have been something very small. It could have been something very big in your life. Well, how does God see you at that point? What, what, what could be God's provision at that point? And I got something very, very exciting to share about this today because I think every one of us at some level have experienced a disappointment or one of our dreams shattered. So you don't want to miss that. But first, I, I, I just want to give you the opportunity, if you haven't already, many tens of thousands have, but if you haven't, received the little booklet, a tiny, tiny booklet written over 100 years ago that we offer uh, for free, just for the asking. The phone number is there. The information is there. I want you to have this. And so here is how you can receive it. And then we go straight into that teaching. Peter Youngren presents the Himself booklet by A.B. Simpson, The Glorious Reality of Christ in You. Peter is offering this as a free gift, so please call now to order your personal copy. Call 1-800-275-2713 and request your free gift today. How God works His best plan in our lives. Now, we are conscious of the fact, we hear it said a lot, that God has a good plan for your life. God loves you. You're important, but how does that plan of God work out? And sometimes we experience that our plans, what we thought was the right thing, it doesn't work out. Sometimes we even have our dreams shattered. So I want to read to you from Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12, where it says, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Now, let's break that down. First of all, salvation. The Greek word is sozo. It means well-being, blessing, forgiveness, victory, deliverance. The, the Hebrew word would be shalom, like how Hebrew people greet one another. Shalom is just much more than a, than a greeting on the Sabbath. It means I want everything to be at peace and to be well for you. And what God has done for us, that's the story of the gospel. He has provided shalom. He has provided salvation for us. But now, once we realize that, it says, now you work that out. What's that going to mean in your life? What's that going to mean in your situation? How are you going to live your life? you got to work this out. What does this mean that God has so incredibly much loved you? But when you work it out, it says, do it with fear and trembling. Now, people say, that means be scared. No. You remember, if you come to this church, you know that the word to be in to fear means to be in awe of. So to fear God is not to be scared of God, it's to be in awe of God. God, you're so big. You're so awesome. It says in Psalm 211, it says, serve God with fear, with awe, and rejoice with trembling. You can get so happy that you actually shake for joy. And why should we have that kind of awe? Because as we are working it out, it said here, God works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So while you're saying, you know, God's done something great and God is, is, has blessed me, it's awesome, Remember, God is at work with you to work out his good pleasure. Now, Eden, where Adam and Eve were created, actually means pleasure. So if you want to know what God's pleasure is, it's Eden, a place where there was no fear and no sense of right or wrong and no knowledge of good or evil. There was no pain, no hatred, no murder. Everything was peace. No one felt that God was against them. Everyone had a friendship with God. That's what God wants. He wants us to have pleasure. Psalm 35 says that God delights in the, takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So when you know that God loves you and you're able to pass that love on to others, that is God's best plan for us, his pleasure. But how many know sometimes life is a mixed bag? Anybody know that? Not everything works out just like it should. And so we experience things. C.S. Lewis said, 
experience is a brutal teacher. And then he said, oh my God, oh my God, it does teach you the lesson. And I would add to C.S. Lewis, as long as you live long enough. Experience is a brutal teacher. So things happen. But in all of that, God is at work in your life. Now, we know about people like Jeremiah or Isaiah or Simon Peter and these. We take it for granted. Okay, it's God was working with those people. They were his people. But God is at work in everyone and particularly in people that we don't expect. Come on now. Sometimes Christians become very greedy and say, oh, God is at work with us, but what about, no. Look at this. Isaiah 45 verse 1 says, and I comp comprise those five verses. The Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches that you may know that I have named you though you have not known me. I will uphold you though you have not known me. So here is a man who doesn't know God at all. Doesn't know anything, doesn't know, you know, God from the Santa Claus. And God says, I've been helping you. You don't even know it. I've been breaking down iron gates for you. I've been showing you treasures. And, and, and I've been with you, and you're not even aware of it, but it's for the purpose that you will know me. Now, this man Cyrus, he was the king of Persia. And what we learn here, God was at working him in him unawares. So I want to say that's why I'm so glad that we are not a judgmental church. We are a church that says God is at work in a whole lot of people much more than we even expect. That's why you come to this church and we don't have petitions going in the, you know, where we are protesting this and that. Sometimes Christians, you know, we are known because we are against everything. So we don't have any petitions because we believe God could be at work in people's lives who we least expect. And in fact, that was true about all of us. Before you had confessed Jesus as Lord, God was at work in your life. Come on, some of you know that's true. You said there was things going on, and now when I look back, I understand God was working in my life. You see, there's no second-class people. God has no plan B. He wants his pleasure, that everything would be made all right, that you would live without fear, knowing how much God loves you. But sometimes when we go through life in this process, sometimes our good plans must fail to make room for God's bigger and better plans. Everybody say this, when my plans fail... God has bigger and better plans. Now, Joseph is an example of that. Joseph's plan failed, but God had bigger and better plans. You know, Joseph was a dreamer. We talk about having big vision, big goals. He's, he's the arch type, Joseph. They even called him the dreamer mockingly. Here comes the dreamer. And, and the more... He shared his dreams with his brother, the more hated he was. It was so angry at him. And, and it went from bad to worse because, you know, his father gave him special nice kind of a, an Armani, you know, coat or some very, very expensive, you know, designer suit. And they just, ah, they were mad. And so he had lots of dreams. I'll give you two of them. Dream number one is this right out of the book of Genesis. He says, brothers, I've had a dream. He says, there we were, our whole family binding sheaves in the field. And behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. How to win friends, I'm telling you. How to, how to impress your family. This guy is having big dreams for himself. You know, his brothers aren't impressed. They seem like, who do you think you are? Like, you, little runt, you are going to rule over us. You're going to be a king. And he says they hated him even more. And he just kept dreaming dreams like this. And then a little while later, he, he is, here comes the second dream that I'm letting you know about. It says here, I call it dream two, same chapter. He says they were out together. Look, he says, I dreamed another dream. Oh, boy, here it comes again. 
And this time, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. Now, even his father got really mad, and he rebuked him. Who do you think you are? And they were full of envy. You know, but it says, the father kind of wondered, there's something, something about this boy. Now, there was something about that boy, Joseph, and he had plans. You know, he, but he had a very limited understanding of his own future. You know, in all these dreams he had, there was nothing about that somehow my life is going to count to help save two nations in famine. There was nothing about true greatness. It was more like, I'm going to be a tycoon. I'm going to be the number one in the family. I mean, I'm going to be the self-made man. And you say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, really nothing. God wants to prosper you. God wants to bless you. But the fact is the Bible is clear that God has bigger plans for people. And what happens in Joseph's cave, God is at work smashing Joseph's plans so that God's bigger and better plans can happen. But what God really had in mind for, for Joseph was too big for him. And so things are going on. He even says that when his brothers saw him, he says, afar off. They conspired, and they laughed. Here comes the dreamer, and they all said, let's kill him, except one brother said, well, how are we going to make money on killing him? Let's just capture him and throw him in a pit, make sure there's no water in the pit. We don't want him to drown, and let's wait by the road, and we'll sell him as a slave. At least he wanted to make some money. So here he is in a, in a waterless pit. Now, where's your dream now? And, and then they sell him as a slave and to, to a group of people called the Midianites, and then they fake his death. They put some animal blood on his expensive suit and show it to his dad and says, oh, we found this suit. Could that be your son's suit? Hey, look at all the blood, and they didn't have DNA tests, so he thought that's Joseph's blood. And so now he's taken away as a slave, forgotten, and things go from bad to worse. Am I describing your life? I hope not, but I could be. Things go from bad to worse because when he comes to Egypt, those Midianite tradesmen, they sell him to the Egyptians and he happens to be sold to a military commander who is the head of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt's uh, personal guard. His name is Potiphar. And now he's in Potiphar's house. Come on now. It looks like life is looking up. And what happens is this, Potiphar's wife, have you heard of her? She kind of thought that Joseph was cute. And she was saying, oh, my husband is gone. He's over there guarding Pharaoh. Come and lie with me. Come and have sex with me. And he says, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to sin against God. And she kept saying that. And you know, hell has no fury, the Bible says. I think the Bible says that. As a woman's core knows not the Bible. <laughs> but, but it almost sounds like the Bible. Well, she gets mad. She says, I'm going to. So he's there. So she grabs his coat. You know the story? And then she screams, rape! And, you know, everybody comes and takes a hold of Joseph, and he's thrown in prison. And, you know, even if you're an innocent person in prison, nobody believes you because everybody in prison is innocent. <laughs> And so, he, he gets, life's not so good. Joseph's big plans are smashed to pieces. Everybody say, when my plans fail, God has bigger, better plans. I, that's what this story tells us. Come on, come on. And so, Joseph keeps a good attitude. You know the story. He, he's working, and he becomes kind of the, the warden of the prison, gets to go on vacation, and Joseph is in charge, and nobody's escaping, and, and, and they're having dreams, and God is with us. So he's interpreting dreams. He's interpreting dreams. And then there's some people there working. One of them is the butler of Pharaoh. He's maybe poisoned somebody. I don't know what a butler could have done, but he's in prison. And here's a dream, and Joseph interprets his dream. And lo and behold, a little while later, the butler is freed. He's back in Pharaoh's house, and now Pharaoh is having dreams. And he, he doesn't know anybody who can tell him what his dream is. And so the butler says, you know what? We, I, I know a guy in prison. And before you know it, he goes from the dungeon of the prison, says he's shaved, he put new clothes on, and he says, 
It says, Genesis 41, 14, Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And now he interprets the, the Pharaoh's dreams. And see, he thought his destiny and plan was to kind of rule the family. But God has a bigger and better plan to rule the nation. He thought he was going to save his own skin. But, but God says, no, you're going to help bring salvation to others. I want to tell you this. God has a plan for your life. But sometimes it's a good thing that our plans are shattered because there's something better coming down the line for you. And then, of course, when he interprets a dream, let me just read you the story here. Genesis 41, before we finish up this part, Pharaoh said to Joseph, after these dreams have been interpreted, inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there's no one as discerning, as wise as you. As you. you shall be over my house. I'll set you all over the land of Egypt. And he gets Pharaoh's ring, and he gets nice clothes. And he has, the Bible describes this, he has a gold chain around his neck. And he's riding right behind Pharaoh. How many know things are looking good? What do we learn from all this? God's bigger and better plans always include others. See, see, all Joseph's dream was about me, 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 me. I'm going to be great. You're all going to kiss my feet. You're all going to bow down. That's not a great plan. That's not greatness. That's just being a narcissist. That's just being self-centered. But God has a bigger and better plan, and it involves other people. It, that's why I say God has a bigger and better plan for our church than to just be a little club where we bless one another, a little limited membership. God is blessing our city and around the world because of our church. God has bigger and better plans. But, you know, Pentecost was all about that. Those disciples, they had big plans. They wanted to be, have a new kingdom. They wanted to be in the cabinet. They wanted to be in the government. They were fighting about who should sit on Jesus' right hand and on Jesus' left hand. But their plans were completely shattered when Jesus Christ was crucified. And then he rose again, and it seemed now he was gone. But on the day of Pentecost, God had bigger and better plans. His plan was that they would be infused with the same power, the same love that had infused Jesus Christ, and they would take this good news to the whole wide world. And that's why we still celebrate Pentecost today. God's bigger and better plans includes others. In just a moment, we're going back to that message where I'm going to talk about when our plans fail, how God has bigger and better plans. But first, there's something I really want you to see. Watch this. A VIP partner takes to heart the words of Jesus. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. V stands for visionary. God's vision is that none will perish. And that's the vision of a VIP partner. I stands for important. The gospel is the supreme task that Jesus gave to every believer. And a VIP partner says, Lord, here am I. Send me. Lord, I'm available. P stands for partnership. 2,000 years ago, Paul the missionary wrote, I thank God for your contributions and partnership in advancing the good news from the first day you heard it until now. The gospel has always advanced because of partnership, and it is still the same. World Impact Ministries operates the only 24-7 Christian television channel in the world's largest Muslim city. Many hear and respond to the gospel for the first time. Great gospel campaigns reach millions as people see Jesus Christ alive today, touching, healing, and lifting. Hearts are touched and multitudes say yes to the gospel. Leadership seminars train thousands of pastors. Gospel television reaches around the world. At a time when many curse the barbaric evil and the darkness of Islamic terrorism, we shine the light of Jesus Christ where the darkness is greatest. The VIP family is about relationship with Christ and one another. The VIP family is about the gospel. It's a basic human right. Everyone must hear the gospel at least once. The VIP family is about people. Every person has immense value and is unconditionally loved by God. The VIP family is about making history by sending the message of Christ to those who have never heard. You're needed. Become a VIP partner. Many give $42 a month, $500 a year, or $84 per month, $1,000 a year, while others share $25, $50, or $200 each month. 
each VIP partner will receive the striking gold-colored cross and globe pin, plus six unique teachings per year from Peter Youngren. Become a Gospel VIP. Call 1-877-974-7223 now. Give monthly through your bank account or your credit card. Whatever the amount, this is urgent. Call 1-877-974-7223 or give online at peteryoungren.org. The VIP family just mean everything to what's happening through this ministry around the world. I mean, when you join the VIP family, you're affecting history. You're changing history on so many levels, so many projects, commitments, lifetime commitments that God has given to us. And the VIP family are saying, you don't have to remind me. I'm going to be with you every month. Thank you, VIP family. Please go to your telephone and say, here's my offering. Here's my commitment. I want to be a part of the VIP family. Now, back to the teaching. The plan of all religion is basically the same. All religions is do your best and God will be pleased with you. That, that's the best humans can do. You know, they say, if I do good, I'll get good. If I try my best, then God will, God will look after me. But you see, that's the fallacy of all religion because our best will never be good enough. Our righteousness, our attempt at doing right, still compared to God, is filthy. It's not enough. It's not enough. And so our plan for how to have peace, how to access God, must be shattered so that we can experience God's bigger and better plan. Religion is all about assessing who is in and who is out. You know, that's why churches are so important to have membership because you got to know who's in and who's out primarily who's out. They don't belong to us. But you see, the gospel isn't like that. The gospel is for the whole world, that Jesus Christ made a way that everybody has access to God. I think of all the examples how Jesus showed us this. You know, there was that crazy man. He was, uh, the Bible says, full of demons. He was deranged. He ran around naked. He's bruising himself. He's cutting himself. He's bleeding. So you know what, what religion says? They say, well, God doesn't like him. He's got to straighten out his act. He's got to get a hold of himself. We, we got to send him away. Put him over there where he belongs, where nobody has to see him. But then Jesus comes and says, no, God has bigger and better plans. We don't put people out, you know, somewhere out here in oblivion. Jesus says, I'm going right where you are. You are included. You're included. God's bigger and better plan. The, the, the religion says, well, that woman, she was caught in the act of adultery. She should be stoned. She's not included. We can't accept her. That was their plan. You know, we, we've got a guard. We, we can't just allow any kind of you know, frothy kind of people come around here. But uh, Jesus says, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. You're included. Zacchaeus felt so out of place that he had to hide in the tree because he, he felt like he, he, he didn't quite belong with the rest of the crowd. He, he, he was a known criminal. He was kind of the mafia boss of Jericho. He, he, was, a, he was a godfather he was Vito Corleone. Some of you don't know who that was, but anyhow, I'll leave that with you. Uh, he, he was over there, and, and he, he didn't belong. And, and it'd be better that he doesn't show himself. Don't show your ugly face in our spiritual gathering. We are holy people here, and we don't want Vito Corleone to come here. And right under that place, Jesus stops. I love that. That's the gospel. That the first will be the last and the last will be the first. That's not our way. But our plans better be shattered because God has bigger and better plans. So don't put people down. The people who thought, I'm so holy. Remember that guy in Jesus' sermon, I'm so holy. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I have. I'm not an extortioner. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not an unjust man. Me, 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 me. God bless me. What happened to him? He got nothing. 
El Zippo Zero. But God has bigger and better plans. The person who said, you know, I'm a sinner. I just need mercy. Jesus says, that man, he got everything. So let your plans, even for how to please God, how to receive God's blessing, let them be smashed and come by the way of grace. Come because the king has shown you his scepter and he says, you are accepted. Come on and be with me. You are my beloved. You are included. You are included for every blessing, for forgiveness of sin, for freedom from fear. You are including for healing and deliverance and freedom and good things because God loves you. Let's everybody stand up right now. I want you to have the same opportunity that people have here in the auditorium. People just responded. We're giving some materials, some books to them. So I want you to go to your telephone right now or go to the internet, peteryounger.org, and you can contact me there and say, I want to receive Christ. And we'll send you the same booklet, the same material. And, uh, or you can just call the line, depending what time of day you're watching this. There will be a prayer minister standing by to pray with you. Don't quit till you get through. It's very, very important. Maybe you thought you could save yourself. Maybe you thought you could just go do self-improvement. That's nice. It'll get you someplace. But you know, really, what this salvation about is about God's unlimited, unmerited, unearned favor for you in Jesus Christ. So call right now. Now, I know there are many of you watching. This was a prophetic word to you because, as I said, you have experienced shattered dreams. And, and we showed you there from Joseph. You know, everything went wrong that possibly could go wrong, but God had something bigger and better. And there's so many examples in Scripture of this. So receive that right now. If you want to call the Grace Prayer Center, you see the phone number right there. And one of our prayer ministers will pray and believe God with you. Thank you also to everyone who's becoming a part of our VIP family, taking the gospel to millions. You are making a huge difference. What we are seeing happening among Muslims is pretty well unheard of, but it is your gifts, your participation that's making it possible. So thank you so very much. And then remember earlier, I mentioned our free gift, the Himself book written a little bit over 100 years ago. It's yours. And so I hope that you will get to your telephone right now, get on the internet and respond. We want to hear from you. And remember, nothing, nothing at all can separate you from God's love in Jesus. You are loved. Thank you. Your partnership makes this ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the good news of Jesus Christ to thousands who have never heard, call 1-877-974-7223. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at PO Box 2108, Vista, California, 92085, 2108 or 190 Railside Road, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, M3A 1A3. Together, let's give everyone a chance to hear the gospel.